Hey, what's up, YouTube? Rex here. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen a uh, ton of videos on the uh, subject of this one, on how to build your own Nintendo emulator inside of a NES cartridge. The problem with a lot of those is that um, there's a lot of wires involved, and it's extremely messy. So in this video here, I'm going to show you guys just a different method to put one of these together. It's a method that I found online from someone else, so I didn't create it myself, but I just hadn't seen a video using this particular uh, setup. So stay tuned and we're going to show you guys how to put one of these bad boys together so you can have your own Nintendo Classic Gaming System at home. All right, here's a few of the things you're going to need. Uh, some of these things I use, you, you do not actually have to use. It's just something that I find to make it easier. First and foremost, an empty cartridge and then the correct screwdriver bit to open said cartridge. You can get these on Amazon. Um, most of the empty cartridges you're going to find are going to have that type of screw. Next thing you're going to need, micro USB OTG charge hub. What this guy does is gets rid of a lot of the excess wiring that you may have seen in previous videos. Uh, with this one box, you can just plug it into one port and then you've got all your ports. You don't need to get an extra hub and then reroute all the cables. Next thing you are going to need is the HDMI to micro HDMI. Uh, that is the only other cable you're really going to have run inside of it. Um, again, this is off of Amazon. The link will be in the description. E6000. Um, you can use this to hold um, any of the components in place inside of it, as well as hold these guys here down to the case. This stuff you usually will find at an arts and crafts store, but it was initially created for electronic purposes, so it will be absolutely good for this. It's not going to have any uh, side effects at all. Next thing, a razor blade. You'll be using this guy to cut out some of the uh, insides of the plastic housing so that all of this stuff will fit in. And then one of the other things I use is a angle file. This helps me after I cut some of the stuff away be able to get inside of the, the corners and do some of that stuff down. And then last but not least, this is an optional step. Uh, this is something that I found on Thingiverse, which I will put a link in the description to that below. Uh, what this will let you do is once you've got the cartridge opened up and everything cleaned out of it, you'll be able to put this down inside of one side, this on the other, and it just gives you kind of guides for all of your wiring and stuff to go into. So it's something that I found that helps a little bit, and then it gives a much cleaner look once it's on the inside of it. All right, once you unscrew your cartridge, open it up, pull out your board, you can either throw this away or you can try to clean it up with some um, isopropyl alcohol and put it on eBay because some people will still buy these chips because they use them for uh, repros, which is doing uh, custom, custom cartridges, things like that. So it still does have a use. So I'm just going to set mine to the side. Now, as you see here, you'll see some of the pieces that I'm talking about here and here that need to be removed. And what you're going to do is take your razor blade and set it flush. And this is where it gets a little time consuming because you just kind of got to start cutting through there and do it on both sides. And eventually you will go through. And once you do, you can use this to kind of cut the rest of it. Same thing with these guys here. Now, the thing that will help with that is your flush cutter. Because once you get some of this off, your flush cutter will sit flat. So you're able to kind of get it in there and clip those sides flush. That way they go. The same thing with these guys here on the sides. As well as with here, you're going to want to remove this thing. And then you're going to want to remove this to about here and this to about here. This guy here is good for when you've got your corners. You can kind of do like this and then clear it all back out. Now, I've already got one of these completed that I'm going to show you guys now. All right, this right here is a custom cartridge that I was working on. I ordered the cartridge off of eBay. 
got a custom label printed so that it was uh, going to be set up for the project I was doing. Now once you open this you will see that I have already gotten rid of all the little areas that I was talking about with the previous cartridge. Once these things are gone, it's going to make everything else a lot easier as far as sitting your pie board inside of it and whatnot. And while I've got it open, I will also show you this guy here. This will sit right in there perfectly. This side will sit in here perfectly. And once it's in there, it's going to hold all your wires nice and close together. And of course, the one thing I forgot to mention is that you will definitely need your pie board. This guy is going to sit right there. There's one more piece here that you have to remove, which I have not done yet. But once that is done, if you're using the plastic thing here, your uh, bezel, your pie board will fit on there. You can use two to four screws to hold it down. Now this little peg right here is another place where your flush cutters will come in handy because you can kind of go right in there, clip it right off, and then that is it. You'll be able to put your pie board there. Make sure this is set to OTG before you do it or else it will not work properly. Now the very last thing I do is screw my pie board down. I leave it unlocked until then so I can kind of open it up. And you need to make sure that when you pull this in that it goes to the power end. That way it does what it needs to do. All right, you've got that. I'm gonna plug the HDMI in. All right, you can see there, of course it's popping up because I'm doing not doing anything to kind of hold it down at the moment. But once it's in there, each one of these I usually glue one by one in there until they hold. Screw the board down and then let everything sit. It's going to take about 24 hours for everything to um, harden up and cure properly. And the same thing with this guy here. Alright, after it's all done and all glued in place, you should get something that looks about like this. Um, if you used the... Um, 3D printed bracket. Uh, at this point, you can go ahead and stick the top over it like that, and then just go ahead and put it together. And that's all there really is at that point. It's just putting it together. It's going to look like this when it's done, nice and clean. Put your screws back in it, and that is it. Um, make sure it clicks just like you heard there. That way, it's going to fit tight when you get your screws on. If you didn't use the 3D printed, um, item just go ahead and put your top back on like you would normally and that'll be it um, if you're not using the black bracket back here one of the things I'm gonna suggest is a piece of 3m double-sided foam tape to hold this down and same with this guy uh, this right here isn't gonna move around too much once it's in here because it's gonna be firmly in place but if you feel better about it go ahead and uh, put your double-sided foam tape and then a uh, mistake that I made earlier in the video that I want to correct is I had stated to make sure your power goes into this guy here. You want it to go into this one because if you put it into this one, it's going to block your screw hole here from uh, being able to put your middle screw in because your wire is going to be over it. And that was my fault for uh, not realizing that when I had said it earlier. So that is it. Uh, that is the main build of your Nintendo Classic Pie Cart. I just want to quickly remind any of my viewers who are currently college students that Amazon is still running their promotion where you can get six months free of Amazon Prime as well as 50% off a year. Uh, the only thing you need is a valid student ID and you're good to go. You can get some cheap Amazon Prime, get that two day shipping, get all your movies and shows. And if you're interested in that, the link will be in the description below.